This is the second video in a, uh, a series of uh, videos on arrays. Uh, this is arrays part two. In the first video we talked about arrays and we compared uh, declaring a, a series of strings, variables, to creating an array and assigning the values to array variables. And we ended with talking about how we could use a single statement to uh, initialize and declare an array, and we could print the array out. Uh, we could also uh, do the uh, assignment individually, and the assignment uh, in the single statement is the same as assigning it in multiple statements. This time we're going to talk about uh, working with the array. I'm going to go back to my string example because, again, uh, most people understand strings and assigning variables and strings, and so we're going to, I'm going to go from there and, and go back to arrays so that we can keep some comparison and hopefully uh, get you over that fear of arrays and get you a little more comfortable with them. So we have our uh, 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 strings here, and let's say that I wanted to sort the strings out. And the uh, if I were looking at strings, I'd say, okay, uh, to sort them, I would have to start saying, oh, comparing them and saying, okay, which one has the lower value? And I can use the compare to statement to do that. And I could say, okay, if, uh, say, if I'm comparing name zero against name one, and I said, okay, if name zero has a lower value than name one, or a higher value than name one, then I would want to switch it so that the lowest value is on the top. And I can do that with the compares to is two statements. So uh, I mean, simply, I'm going to paste some code in here that I've already written, so that, and I'll explain it to you. Okay, so uh, I've pasted this code, and it's a simple if-then statement. If name zero dot compare to name one is greater than zero, then uh, we're going to take their temp string value. We're going to assign the value of name zero, in this case Bob to temp string, and then we uh, assign the name Jenny to name zero, and then we assign uh, what's in the temp string Bob to name one. So basically it does a, a little switcheroo here, that's all this if-then statement does. And so let's go ahead and save this and run it. And we'll see that we end up with Bob, Jenny, Charlie, Jerry. Okay, let's uh, switch the, let's switch and see if this is really working here. And so now, name zero is Jenny, so it's going to compare Jenny against Bob. And if I save that and run it, uh, we still end up with Bob on top. Okay? So uh, it looks at this and it says, okay, uh, Bob is lower than Jenny, so I need to put Bob on top. Okay? So real simple, we could sort. And then if we wanted to, to do this again, we could compare Jenny to Charlie, and then Charlie, and we'll put Charlie up in Jenny's place, and then we can pair Jenny to Jerry, and say, well, Jerry and Jenny stay there, and compare Jerry to Roberta, and that would move, that would leave them in their place, and then compare Roberta to Anita, and that would move Anita up to number four. Then we'd have to run through it again, and you understand we'd have to do this multiple times before we finally had it sorted correctly. That'd be a lot of code. Um, so now let's go take a look at arrays. And let's do that same code. So I'm going to actually grab that and paste that here. And we'll do the sort names and everything. And let's paste it into our fun with arrays. Um, I'm going to remove this string and we'll go back to our, to our uh, regular string here. And uh, get assigned to the individual assignments. Uh, I think it'll make it, uh, again, I, I think it makes it a little clearer where we're at. So as we do this, we can... Uh, look at, uh, okay, so we're going to sort our arrays, and this time instead of temp zero, we're going to replace the value of that with uh, with uh, the value from the uh, from the array, and we could do zero, but, you know, we could run this in a for loop, and we could probably have it do it multiple times in the for loop. So I'm going to put i in here, but let's go back and build our for loop, and then we can uh, move from there. So I'm going to build a for loop. And uh, we'll give it an iterator of i again. i equals zero. And again, we'll go with the i uh, 
less than uh, name dot length. Uh, and I'm actually going to do minus one, and you'll see in a moment why. I'll explain in a moment why. I plus plus. Okay, and so we name dot compare to name uh, instead of name one. We were comparing name zero to name one, so actually we want uh, when i is zero, we want this to be i plus one. Okay, so when i is zero, this is going to be name one. So it's going to compare uh, name zero to name one. Okay, uh, we have to declare a temp string here. Let's do that. Okay, so it likes temp string. And then, so again, instead of name zero, we're going to do name i. And again, name zero is always going to be name i in this case. And the name one, we're going to do i plus one. And so we've really taken the same code to compare those, and we've created a really nice loop here saying, okay, let's do this, and we have our for statement. Let's go ahead and add the uh, brackets here so we can keep that whole for statement inside the brackets. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do source format to indent that so it's cleaner. Okay, so. Um, so this is going to go, we know that name.length is six times, minus one would be five times. So this is going to loop this five times. And essentially it's going to say, okay, compare Bob to Jenny, that's one. Compare Jenny to Charlie, that's two. Charlie to Jerry, three. Jerry to Roberta, four. Roberta to Anita, five. And each time it's going to move the um, value up that is uh, the lower value. So let's go ahead and save that and run that. So now we have done it. We, uh, we have Bob and then Charlie. So it compared Jenny to Charlie and moved Charlie up. And it compared Jenny to Jerry and it left Jerry in name three spot. Uh, name four spot, it compared Anita to Roberta and moved Roberta up. So we've moved Anita up one. We really don't have it completely sorted yet, but we realize that uh, to move Anita all the way to the top and obviously move the lowest or the highest one down, we could go Anita here, one, two, three, four, five. So basically, we just need to run the outside and outside loop five times. So it does five comparisons like that. And so let's go ahead and create an outside loop. And we use t equals zero. Uh, t is less than. minus one again and he plus plus and we'll add our closing bracket down here again and let's clean up our formatting and there we have it we've created our outside loop let's go ahead and save that and run it and voila I need it at the top we've got everybody alphabetically Okay, so let's uh, let's do uh, one more thing here. Let's go ahead and change this to eight, and let's add two more names here. And so we have name, um, and this is going to be six equals. And let's do uh, oops. Uh, Sylvia. And let's make this one um, Dan. Okay, so we've just added two more, and, and that's the flexibility of this. We don't have to change our for statement. I save this, I run it, and voila, it's going to sort. It doesn't matter how many adds. I could add 50 different values here, and this for statement is going to loop them and sort them for me. 
Okay, so I've created a, a double loop or a double uh, yeah a double loop statement that will go and sort my um, values for me, and, uh, and I haven't had to change it. I can I can add as many string variables as I want to this, and it's going to do the sorting for me. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool about arrays is there's also a bunch of built-in values. And those of you that have worked with Java before are probably looking at me going, why are you doing this? And because uh, Java already has a simple built-in um, method for that. Okay, um, and if we uh, go ahead and add our import statement and format that again. Okay, so uh, all of this code that I wrote, these, this for statement, um, I didn't even need to write that. Uh, I could have written arrays.sort name, save it, and run it, and voila, they're all sorted. But uh, my purpose wasn't just to uh, reinvent the wheel. It was to show you that we can do a lot with the uh, with the uh, arrays by the by using their dynamic nature. Um, using the name, their, their dynamic nature, when we we can do for loops to assign and to pull numbers out of the arrays, we can do i plus one inside of this box and really what it does is it just takes the number and it's a pointer to the value in the array. Okay? Um, so next we're going to talk about um, uh, arrays that are um, parallel. So if you want to stay tuned for the next video, we'll go into parallel arrays.